This is the ultimate survival adventure. Over 200 mods put together, turning Minecraft into an amazing fantasy adventure. There are 12 eyes hidden all around the world in all sorts of different structures, guarded by bosses, baddies, and a whole lot of distance. So far, I've found one, and I died to get it. No! So that's one of my three lives down. This is episode three. So if you want to know what I'm talking about, you're going to want to go back to the previous two videos or don't. I'm just a disembodied voice commentating over some Minecraft gameplay. But when we last left off, I was a disembodied voice attached to a character who was escaping a dragon chasing his airship. And believe me, as I was flying away here, my real life self was really scared that I was about to encounter my second death. But after landing at a nearby tower, looting everything from the chest and hiding down inside waiting for nightfall, the fiery death didn't quite come. So I jumped back into my airship and flew away, making sure to give a wide berth around the dragon's nest, but still not seeing it laying inside. So it's out and about and on the prowl. I landed at a nearby village, thankfully unburninated so far, sleeping on the roof and then doing a bit of exploring. There was a grave or a statue or something outside. I made sure to break that down for resources. And then looking at the map, I realized which direction the dragon had gone. Oh yeah, it looks like the dragon definitely went back here in this direction, considering the scorched earth that's there. I went ahead and authorized myself on this town's waste zone in case I ever want to warp over in this direction, checking out a nearby mushroom structure that was really only guarded by a single piglin brute spawning out of the spawner that I was able to break before it went ahead and got new friends. Chest loot was pretty good, including the first obsidian of the world, which I was able to collect and store away in that loot backpack, jumping back in the airship and flying my way back home. Once I was home, I did a little bit of decorating, a little bit of organizing, and it was time for an upgrade. This is awesome. Enchanting setup. Wait, I could have just taken the enchanting table. I didn't need to craft this. I just remembered. Oh, I'm upset with myself now. I could have just stolen the enchant. Uh, oh, oh. All right, well, let's take the few pieces of lapis that we got and put it to use. Protection four. All we need is level 30. Okay. These already have protection one, so I can't enchant these. Protection four would be awesome, so I think we're going to go straight to that. So we need levels, and one really good way to gain those right now is actually, surprisingly, doing a little bit of farming. Now, normally you wouldn't get experience from farming, but we have all sorts of magic beans that we're able to grow that will give us that, including Inferium. This magic dust, which is grown from a bunch of plants that you just leave lying around, can allow you to craft basically anything, from wood to animal parts to diamonds. Don't think about it too hard. Just, just don't think about it too hard. The only problem is you need a ton of it if you want to make any actual substantial upgrades. So getting started on this now definitely helps and some early advancements that you can get from it would give me some nice gains to get up towards level 30. Once I was through the night though, I plopped down a waystone here at home, warped over to the Birch Forest Village that was somewhat close by and did a little bit of exploring to see what I could possibly see. And you know what they say, always check inside the tower. I knew there'd be something up here. Experience. Oh, that's actually really good because that's what I need right now. Oh, I can have both. Heck yeah. I'm a pirate now. Look at me. With a new gauntlet that would allow me to double my EXP gains? Yeah, it's time for some fighting. I don't know what it is, but it actually got really satisfying to just break the barrels near the end of this instead of looting through each one individually. There's something about like the little pinata effect of a bunch of items with loot beams just plinking down onto the ground to allow me to collect all of the treasure here. With my pockets and my backpack 
moderately full and it getting a little bit late into the night, I headed back over towards the church with the waystone inside, warping my way back to the base, grabbing some lapis and getting myself a massive upgrade. Massive, absolutely massive. Now we can actually take like two hits. See what everything else enchants to. Silk touch would be nice. Efficiency too. I'll take that. Just unbreaking. You know what? That is not bad. I'll take that. And I'm not done there. Magic dust. Time to meet the other magic dust in this mod pack. Let's try to take on a dungeon for ourselves. What do you say? Eating this is a bad idea, but also necessary for our progression. I can't eat it. <laughs> I can't eat it. I have to take damage. I know how to take some damage. That'll do. <laughs> I thought this was like a golden apple, but no, I can eat it now. Dungeon's Visitor. That apple is going to be the first step towards a whole new set of magic and abilities that I can unlock that can give me the power to smite enemies with lightning, throw boulders across the world, heal myself, or just straight up make me invulnerable for a few seconds at a time. And given some of the bosses in this mod pack, I want to rely on all of those spells going forward. But it's not as easy as eat the apple, become a wizard. No, you have some steps you need to take. Now I think I can just craft this. I don't actually need to go for the desert. Oh, it allows you to get the dungeon seeker advancement. So I need it. Oh, that's frustrating. We're gonna have to find a desert. I have no idea where to even find a desert. So since we're not gonna be able to find a desert anytime soon, I figured let's go and focus back on our first magic dust and do a little bit of caving. Hello, goblin friend. What do you have to trade for me? Oh my god, if only we had fortune. Oh no, goblin friend! Oh, you're fine. <laughs> I thought the game was paused. I was wrong. So you have a bit of useful trades. Thank you. <laughs> what is this? Whatever it is, it is interesting and there's a door. to have this here to just collect treasure. Ooh, some pearls. That's awesome. What's that? Coins. Ow. 
Oh, nope. Not having skeletons kill me two episodes in a row. Unbreaking sharpness. Yo, this is huge. What is this structure, though? This is awesome. Oh, my goodness, all these chests have loot. Diamonds. See, this is perfect timing with the blue moon because I'm getting better rolls on all of these chests. That's what luck actually affects. It only affects chests and I think maybe fishing. But this is the perfect time to have found this thing right here. And that is the end of the day and what we call perfect timing. This will grow amethyst now for me, which is really nice. That's actually genuinely very useful. <sighs> no shot. Look at that. Always check behind walls, folks. First obsidian, oh, first obsidian break of the server. Yes. Is that just coal blocks? Block of despair. Oh, I suddenly feel less safe about where I am right now. Okay, nothing else is immediately around that. Let's just throw that in a backpack so it can't affect me at all. And head back upstairs. And with two successful days spent in the mines, the crafters, they yearn for the mines. I did a little bit more mob fighting to just pick up any odds and ends, finding some more diamonds and amethysts in yet another little mine shaft area down here, grabbing the tools, grabbing the tiniest bit more of magic dust, I don't have a problem, you do, fighting a few kobolds, and then heading up the water, returning my way back up to the surface, dropping everything off, organizing it, and calling it a day. So I didn't realize this, but when I was down in the caves and I killed that witch, I got a witch pupil. Now, this might be kind of eye themed. It's not an eye, but it can be. All I need is an eye of ender. So if we can find some blaze powder, this, this is eye number two. So if we put this right here, we get an end portal going. We can get another eye. Also, my pickaxe is about to break. We have another diamond pickaxe that we found. So let's check enchanting on this. Unbreaking three would be very nice. Let's see what we get. Just unbreaking, which is a bit of a bummer. Let's try unenchanting this. Does that put us up to level 30? No. Bomber. Do you have anything we can do for a level? We do a little bit of crafting, actually. Nice. We got food coming, too. We are very soon going to be able to make ourselves a lot better foods, which is great because this is very full. Plop those in there for right now. Make a few hay bales and some bread. That will have to do for the moment. Bring the carrots out just to make some space. But what we can actually do really quickly 
some upgrades because our bow is about to break too. So let's enchant a new bow or let's see what a new bow would get us as well as our new pickaxe. Power four would be so good. And efficiency four would be good as well. So let's get a level going. How can we get a level quick? We can cook some things. Potatoes. Potatoes is good for XP. So we're gonna go ahead and upgrade some of our stuff to Inferium right now. First things first, we can get our watering can upgraded. So this will do a lot better now. Then we can try to upgrade our bow, but I kind of want to enchant it first so it doesn't ruin. But we can upgrade our chest plate. We need some iron in our inventory. There we go. Make a couple of those. We have a couple of those. All of those and all of those. We can upgrade our chest plate. So we go from eight and two to eight and two. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't upgrade, but it puts us on the track, which is important. Because if we wanted to, we could upgrade to this, which is eight and two to five. But it can go all the way through multiple tiers. So like this one to this one to this one to this one. And when we have all of these, we have create a flight. So we're basically invincible, but also we're green because green probably also upgrade to a diamond helmet at the very least. But this is awesome now because now I can water a huge section of the crops. Oh no, no, I didn't mean to do that. This will start everything growing a lot faster. Well, at least a little bit faster. Why don't we spend some time though and see what the nether looks like. You can put it over here. It'll be far enough away that we won't hear it. And yes, I'm filling in the corners because professionals have standards. You better believe we fill in the corners here. Here we go. All right, let's do this. Of course, of course it's a Basalt Delta. It's a video from me, of course it's a Basalt Delta. Well, regardless where we spawned, the first thing I needed to do was secure my portal to deal with all of the modded monsters. And I dealt with this thing that you might not have heard of called a ghast. Wait, I only had two arrows. That's a problem. You're potentially a problem. Wait, what is this? Is this a prosperity shard? It is. Now the nether here is dangerous, but not unfamiliar to me. I actually started with the ultimate mod pack based off of the mod pack I made for my 100 days nether adventure a few videos ago at this point. So things like these piglin ships are things I'm familiar with. The things that are attacking me from outside, however, a little bit less so. Of course it's missing the front. These ships have a nasty habit of always missing the front. What is that? What is that? I know, but it went down like a jump. <laughs> when you can kill it and it can't see you, everything dies. Are you throwing people at me? You are. Oh, I drank those way too fast. Are they just throwing their kids at me? Man, parenting in the nether has gone downhill. Now that I understood the 
angry striders that throw babies? I mean, I don't know how to make that funny. <laughs> Actually, I know how to make that funny, but I don't know how to make that funny in a way that's appropriate for my channel, okay? I did a little bit of looking around, seeing what I could only identify as some sort of boss arena made out of nether brick a little bit ways away, marking that and deciding to head off in the opposite direction, throwing a pearl to clear the lava and then starting to make my way over the terrain. And lucky for me, it didn't take long to find another fortress, literally just over one hill. And I have a lot I want from here, but the wither skeletons that fill this structure are extremely dangerous. They wear Maximalian armor, and if you watched Game of Thrones or a few other videos, that armor makes you extremely hard to kill and makes you suffer zero knockback, meaning there's no way to clear the gap. If a wither skeleton catches you unprepared, they are on you until one of you dies. Wait, wait, wait. Yo, that's another eye. That's huge. That's another eye. Yes. That's another nether eye. So for context, the nether eye is probably the most common, but it still feels good to get it. My second eye is massive. That's another step towards being able to beat this game and complete this challenge. But there's more that I want from this structure. So I'm making sure to explore the other areas as well. Breaking the gate, or at least one of the ways that the gate is open. And I love how this all integrates with create when both are installed. But the main fortress here is where I'm going to be able to find a few other things that are going to be essential. Nether wart and blaze rods for potion brewing, as well as a whole bunch of netherite if I go look in the right places. Because the actual fortress up here, the layers and the rooms, this is just the beginning. The things that you expect to see in the nether fortress it's just the top floor. And working my way down the spiral staircase hidden inside of one of the legs of this main structure, you get to the underground, the under lava, which is where things get really dangerous. Well, I got one trade, I don't have time for you right now. <laughs> Okay, now I have time for you. Ow! Nothing right now. Sorry, buddy. One of the first rooms that I was really excited to find was actually the library. On here is a bunch of flame related enchants. I broke down everything that I got here, including all the item frames and everything else. That's all just nice to have. And I got relatively lucky on my rolls. I think these are just unwritten right yeah these are empty the enchanted books though smite fire aspect fire aspect binding protection look they're all nether themed it's all somewhat on brand but still it's good to have I continued clearing my way through all of the tunnels here, getting whatever I could, fighting any wither skeletons, mainly by leading them back to a too high gap where I could kill them with relative impunity. But then I started seeing ones that were a real problem. They're wearing half diamond. So that kind of armor right there is indicative of another backpack mob. I don't know if there's an actual more accurate term for them, but the sophisticated backpacks mod will sometimes spawn mobs with a backpack on. And usually when it does, it greatly increases their armor and their damage and danger, mainly by making them faster, stronger, and deadlier. I lost my first life to one of these mobs, just a regular skeleton with an iron sword. That's a wither skeleton with a giant two-handed steel flame blade. No way I'm messing with that. So I bravely started making a retreat out of the area, trying to mine my way into another tunnel and then headed down there where I couldn't be followed by any of the wither skeletons. The only problem is the tunnel I was trying to get through was blocked by both withers and blazes. And I had to fight my way through, gaining a few inches at a time here and there. I did find another secondary dropped off area, which I was able to go and explore, grabbing a bunch of gold string and other resources from an area that looks like 
maybe an obelisk had been melted down. But once I returned back to the tunnel, which led to the exit, I started hearing something really concerning. What is that sound? Not knowing what that is, or if it could reach through the blocks, or it was going to catch me up at the surface, I ascended extremely carefully, mining through the wall, trying to find an evac plan. And I saw one just over the distance. There's a waystone there. If we can get that... Can we get to that? There, there. I mean, it's really hard to make work. On the way over to the Waystone, I found a chest with a pretty nice bow inside, upgrading myself and trying to clear a path. I made it down a level and then down another staircase, having to pin myself into an area being surrounded by wither skeletons, and they were not giving up easily. Oh, that's huge. No way did I just get a second wither skull. That's two. That's two. Okay, buddy. Don't mind me. Just walking through here. Friend. Let's break this nether tower. Saddle, fire res. Okay. But I think it's time. Let's, it's gonna cost me three, it's worth it. Let's go home. <laughs> that was tense. I genuinely, that could have gone so badly. I cannot believe that we have two wither skulls. That is half a wither, well, two thirds of a wither. Almost a wither, most of a wither. Just from one trip to the nether. That went really well. That could have gone very badly, but it almost, it almost went really well. I had a waste on here the whole time. Look, it's all about dramatic tension, okay? But we are now below level 30, so we can't do another round of enchanting just yet. I am tempted to try to make ourselves a little bit of some upgraded stuff. Firstly, I wanna see if I can upgrade this bow. And honestly, that's pretty easy. So let's just go ahead and upgrade that quick. Power to bow. Now, what would it would it take to upgrade it again? I need to make an infusion crystal. Make ourselves that. Now, the annoying part. That is that, which is that. We might actually have enough to go multiple upgrades. Stand by. We'd be a little short. But anyway, Prudentium Bow. Let's upgrade that. And a Tertium Bow. We are one short. But check it out. We have basically our third. <gasps> Wait. Hold on. We can craft it. Let's actually craft it. We have just enough. Eye of Ender. Craft. This is our third eye. The witch's eye. That feels awesome. We're one quarter of the way to being able to beat this game, complete this challenge. 25% complete with this goal. 
three eyes is not enough to open the portal and allow me to fight the dragon but it is a massive start and being only one life down those ratios are kind of matching up but now that i had a whole bunch more levels i did some basic enchanting on my gear or at least investigated what enchants i would get the next time i was above level 30 but i started putting those potion ingredients that i had been collecting to use making myself a whole set of strength and splash healing regeneration pots combat related potions which might give you an idea of what i'm thinking to do next once i had everything i need to prepare myself for a fight i headed over into the woods to go tell a few hermits hello and not the ones from her it's the skeletons i'm gonna fight the skeletons um There you go. <laughs> Get absolutely wrecked. Strength potions are insane. Now, if I had done that slower, I probably would have actually earned more experience, but worthwhile. I don't think that's an actual block. Yeah, there we go. It's gone. Ooh, cursed gloomy bones, a whole bunch of spells, some ashes. So we got a whole two levels out of that, which I think is just a matter of hubris. If we go do that in a less efficient manner, we should probably gain some more XP. Literally the definition of suffering from success. We killed it too well. Hello. Killed it too well the first time around. That's a lot of snacks. Or not. Well, we did okay. <laughs> What's this? Fear. I'm afraid, apparently. I don't know why. What am I supposed to be afraid of? Fighting a few more dinosaurs, I headed back towards home, taking some of the 30 plus level enchants to upgrade my gear. See what we get on our boots. Hopefully it's something good. Let's go. That is awesome. So we now have two pieces of protection four. We haven't even enchanted our helmet yet. I'm breaking three. What would the pants get? Let's let's disenchant these. Blast four. Protection three. And protection two. This is pretty good. We are now in at least partial protection everything. That feels awesome. So let's recap. I'm now in at least partial protection four. I've upgraded my chest plate from diamond to inferium, meaning it provides additional benefits. I have potions, I have enchants, I have better weapons, I have better ranged combat. It's time to go spread some freedom and liberate a village. For democracy! Look, I just want to play Helldivers eventually, okay? But jumping in the airship, I flew over towards the village, blasting Freebird over the speakers as I was ready to drop in and cause some damage. Those pillagers had controlled this town for long enough, and it was time for new management. The only problem was there were no more employees. Problem is I don't hear the villagers. I was really hoping to be able to buy arrows because I don't have any. 
I think the village might actually be dead. So if I can't protect the village, I'm going to be damn sure that I'm at least going to avenge it. I started working my way into the castle, switching between my potion bottle and my double jump cloud to give me mobility, but to also protect me from the blindness of the illusioner mobs. I also took out some of the easier kills down and around the lower levels of the castle that were trapped in with water since I had a little bit more mobility there due to my snorkel, which I think gave me a passive pseudo depth strider capability. I hear villagers. And while I was well protected, I am not invulnerable here. Pillagers are still doing three or four hearts of damage on axe hits, arrows pelting me from all directions can keep me on the back foot if I'm not careful. So positioning was extremely important, taking advantage of whatever environmental aspects I could to make sure to be able to eliminate my opponents before they had a chance to do real damage. And the most important thing is to just never panic. Always have a cool head and know where you're going. No! See you all next week, everyone. Bye.